Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I Sashiko stitch my projects. Now, before anything, I know this is kind of a sensitive topic to some people. So disclaimer, this is just how I do it. Is it the right way? Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I like how it looks. I think this is how you do it. This is how I interpret it, you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So what is the definition of Sashiko stitching? Now I will read it on my phone so I don't get it wrong. And uh, Sashiko is a type of traditional Japanese embroidery or stitching used for the decorative and or functional reinforcement of cloth and clothing. So the first part of it says that it's used for decorative purposes and that's what I mainly use it for. For example, the Sashiko patchwork pants that I did, this right here is on the back of the right leg. Boom. So decorative purposes. So obviously there's no uh, distress things and no repairs in this area. So again, decorative purposes. And then the second part of the sentence says that you can use it for repairs. In this video, I'm not gonna show you guys how I use Sashiko stitching to repair stuff because it's pretty straightforward. It's basically the same thing. All you gotta do is like put a fabric underneath the, the hole or whatever, and then add the design and it'll be sturdy. That's really it. So how to Sashiko stitch. First off, we gotta start with the items and the tools and stuff that I use. So the main thing, obviously you need a needle because Sashiko stitching is more hand sewn. I'm pretty sure there are ways to like use a sewing machine, but I think the more authentic ways to hand sew it, the way that I like to do it is hand sewing. I hand sew a lot, I spent hours just using this needle right here. Um, I don't really know the size of this one, but I did buy this off Amazon. It's uh, a bunch of hand sewing needles from the Singer. And this one that I'm using is the biggest one. Bruh is the biggest and longest and thickest one. <laughs> now I choose to use the bigger one because I mainly work with denim, which is a lot thicker fabric than your regular average cloth, like a regular t-shirt or something like that. There's a technique I'll show you guys later on the video um, where you have to actually go through the denim fabric with this needle multiple times at once. Next up, also super important, I mean, obviously you really need this, but is the thread that you're gonna use. This right here is size 10 crochet thread in like a neutral color. It's very overexposed in the video. Now there is Sashiko thread. Honestly, I've never actually used that before. I never really bought it because I mean like it's a whole roll, you know what I mean? And it has like the thickness and the color that I'm looking for. And this is like, I think it was like five or six bucks. So I mean, for all of this, I think it's a steal. In my opinion, I think this also gives off the same look as if I was using Sashiko thread. So I'm cool with this. Now because the thread that I'm using is really thick, especially in comparison to the hole on this needle right here, I'd recommend buying a tool that would help you thread the needle. But for me personally, I didn't want to spend money on buying that little thing. So I just used like this excess thread that I got from like a seam from my past project and use this to thread the needle basically. This next tool is just as important as the thread and needle and it's a white chalk pencil. For intricate designs like this one right here, obviously I didn't freehand this. I didn't just take the needle and thread and just like, you know, when at it, I'm not creative like that, not gonna lie. In order to make this, I used a white chalk pencil. Basically, I would draw it in first and then I would hand sew it from there, basically making a guideline. Now, these next ones you don't really need, but they are really helpful, are some rulers. Now, I have a 18 inch one right here and it's clear and that's really helpful, by the way. And then for the longer ones, like when I was working on the kimono, I used this yardstick because I wanted uh, longer straight lines. Obviously, it's a lot easier to make longer straight lines using a longer stick than a shorter stick, you know? The last thing you're gonna need is the fabric that you're gonna be working on. I mainly use denim, like I said before, but you can stash you stitch on pretty much anything. But for the fabrics that are a lot less sturdy, a lot more flimsy, more like soft, you know? Kind of like this shirt, for example, you have to be careful when you are stashing stitching and how much you pull on uh, the threaded needle because it'll like end up scrunching it up. You'll understand when you get to it. Actually, there's one other tool you'll need and it's some um, scissors. I got some fabric cutting scissors right here and it's just to cut the thread. That's really it. So first off, you're gonna get your thread and you're gonna try to determine how much thread you're gonna need uh, for whatever you're trying to stitch. So normally I like to start off with about like an arm's length. There's actually a lot more, but you know what, we're gonna work with it. You don't wanna cut it too short because we will be folding it in two. You'll have a hard time threading the thread through the loop because of how thick it is. So to get around this, we're gonna take our excess seam thread, make it into a little loop and feed it through the needle. But we're not gonna pull it through all the way, only until it creates a big enough loop about the size of a dime. Now we can take one end of the thread, feed it through the loop, and then pull the excess seam thread back outwards from its tail end until both the seam thread and the crochet thread are pulled through the needle hole. Be careful on this part though, because if you pull too hard, 
hard or force it, you can rip the seam thread. Now to tie a knot on one end of the thread. To do this, line up both ends of the thread together, making sure they're even, and pull the needle to the other side, making sure that the thread on both sides of the needle have no excess slack, and again, are even. Now take the ends of the thread and place it on the right side of the needle to form an X with the thread and the needle. Now take the longer end of the thread and wrap it around the needle twice clockwise. Join the newly wrapped thread with the thread you are already pinching together and then pinch them all. But again, not too hard. Then with your left hand, pull the needle outwards while your right hand is still pinching together the knots you made until it gets to the end of the thread. If there's some loose thread sticking out of the knot, take both ends of the thread and pull them apart to make it even again. So I'm going to show you guys the simplest form of sashiko stitching, but at the same time, it's pretty much the foundation of the process. The pattern here, as you can see, goes in a straight line horizontally. And if you've sewn before, I'm pretty sure you can imagine how this was sewn in. It's just a simple over and under stitch. Think of it like how dolphins follow boats. While swimming forward, they jump out of the water, then they dive back into the water, and then they jump back out, and then the process repeats. They go over and under, over and under, over and under. Same concept. To hide the knots, I usually start the stitching from the inside and then when I finish I end it with an under stitch so that I can tie the finishing knot on the inside as well. So let's do an example. We're going to use our white chalk pencil to make a straight line with the ruler to make a guideline. Now we're going to poke the thread through the fabric starting from the inside and pull it all the way through until the knot at the end gets caught. Sometimes right here one side of the thread gets uneven so be sure to flip the fabric over to check for this. Now apparently the western way of hand sewing is you just keep threading the needle in and out one stitch at a time so you go in, pull the thread all the way through, out, pull the thread all the way through. But this can slow down the entire process. So I use the Japanese way where I thread the needle multiple times through the fabric at once along the line I drew and pull it through after about three or four stitches. Now you keep doing this until you get to the end or you're about to run out of thread. And honestly, that's pretty much it for the basics. From here, you can sew in different designs like adding in a vertical line to the horizontal lines you were making to make crosses and so on and so forth. You can get like super creative with this part. To end the knot, feed the needle through the fabric so it's on the inside so you gotta go in and pull it all the way through the next part is kind of difficult to explain not gonna lie um, but yeah just watch closely what i do i did it pretty slowly and it's kind of self-explanatory so yeah check it out Now in order to make more intricate designs, all you have to do is draw what you want to sew with your white chalk pencil on the fabric you're going to sew it on, and then stitch it using the over and under method. You just have to make sure to follow the guidelines that you made. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. I think the most difficult part is probably drawing in the design, um, but the whole hand stitching process is just time consuming, but for the most part, it's pretty simple to do. And there you go. That is how I Sashi will stitch my jeans, my projects, and everything. Hope you guys learned something from this and will incorporate this into your projects. I know hand sewing is very, very time consuming. Literally can take hours and everything. Like this design right here that I made, this took like, I think, three hours or four hours or something like that. It's time consuming, but in my opinion, I think the end result is definitely worth it. I mean, you can just have some Netflix over on the side, watch a Kung Fu Panda while you're sewing easy. But if you guys found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, make sure to drop a like. Hit that sub button too. I'd really appreciate it. I've been working on some things in the background, so I haven't really had a lot of time to work on DIYs and everything like that. But yeah, Tapshi DIY coming soon. If you want to keep up to date with what I'm working on, follow me on my Instagram at Julius Nathan. I normally post updates on my story. If you have any questions about, you know, some DIY project you're working on, about something that I worked on, but a technique or something, DM me. I don't mind replying. I don't mind helping you guys out. Again, hit that sub button. Let's try to get to 10K before the summer starts. That'll be freaking crazy. That'd be a huge boost in motivation. You know what I mean? But I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.